what's going on everybody it's josh and this video is going to be a little bit different compared to the other videos mainly because there's no exploring today i wanted to take some time just do a little sit down go over some of the previous videos that we did and i had a bunch of questions that people had asked and i figured we just address them right now these questions have come up on twitter which my twitter is at what's a josh just in regular conversation with people at work people in my life so i figured Let's do a little show and tell, go through some of the questions and show you some of my toys. So um, right now I'm actually recording in my internet radio studio. I have uh, three internet radio stations. Um, it's one of the things I really enjoy doing. And yeah, so that's why you're seeing this little on-air light behind me. It's because I'm sitting at my radio station. Um, so question came in and said, what kind of equipment do you use? This is my favorite part. I love showing off all the toys I have. So I use a few different things. I'll start with a couple items that I bought first. And that would be, of course, Anybody who's ever done any paranormal investigating, you need your digital MP3 recorder, right? This is the whole idea of these videos is I love getting these EVPs. Though I want one, I'm not the biggest fan of, I think they're called the spirit boxes where they go through radio stations and then they spit words out. I'm not a big fan of those with the way they're used on most ghost hunting shows. I do like how they're used on some of their YouTube channels. And later on this year, I have a couple places we're gonna film where I want to bring one with me because there's this thing called the Estes method where you basically sit somebody down, put on some headphones, plug into the spirit box. They can't hear what you're saying. You ask questions and as they hear words pop out of the spirit box, they say them. It is creepy. And in my opinion, I think it's the coolest way they work. I've got my MP3 recorder and my analog recorder. Analog recorder, for those of you who don't know, it just means I'm using an old school tape. Um, if there's any... Younger people watching, you probably don't even know what that is, but that's fine. Somebody asked me why I record with digital and analog. I look at these as two totally separate tools. I know that sounds weird because they're both audio tools, but they work totally different. This is ones and zeros. This, in my opinion, is more organic. Um, you get more of a white noise. I just think that if an energy is going to communicate through this, it's gonna be different than this. When I did this on Gibbs Bridge, I actually got more on this than I got on this. But when I did the Wolfinger Cemetery, all the communication was through this. In fact, this was what went flying over when I had asked that spirit if they were mad that they were murdered. Another one of my toys that I just bought is my K2. This thing is pretty cool. I want to say I know exactly what these are used for. I know there's a construction use for these. I, it's tried, I think it's so they can find electromagnetic fields. It's not necessarily to find wires, but if you've got any type of low-key radiation or anything like that, not the kind that's going to hurt you, these usually spike. I could be wrong on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the idea is that if there's a spirit nearby, this thing would spike up because it's messing with the energy around it. Now, if you're around a bunch of different wires like I am right now in a studio, it's spiking everywhere. So one of the things I do when I go out to film is I do a base reading first. So I'll make sure my phone is on airplane mode and I'll just kind of go around to see if it spikes anywhere before I actually start the EVP session and start the K2 session. But you'll see these at a lot of ghost hunter shows. Pretty much every ghost hunter has them. They're only like maybe 30 or 40 bucks if that if you get it get this one this one is the uh k2 enterprises made out of new york made in the usa so really cool hold on to that as far as my other toys i have some cat balls they came in the mail they're not as furry as i thought they'd be get it but you'll see these on ghost hunter shows too the idea is if something touches them they start going crazy so I have not had a chance to use these because the two videos that I filmed have been outside and I just think that these could be false positives. You want to call that? Is that that's a thing now, right? It's always been a thing. I've got the bigger balls. Sorry. Um, <laughs> as well, I don't know that these ones work. I think you really got to hit it. I would still take it with me to see if it works. But when I do the uh, inside investigations, these are definitely coming with me. Um, somebody asked, what made you start doing these videos? So, I don't know. I'm really big into having hobbies, finally. I used to never have hobbies. I always got really suffocated in my day job. Whatever that day job may be, for the longest time, it was when I worked in the radio industry full-time. Uh, I just felt like I didn't have a life outside of that. And then when I quit doing that and I moved over to my current line of work, I was kind of going at it the same way. And in the line of work that I'm in right now, if you submerge yourself in that, it is super unhealthy. Um, though it is a great paying job, very secure job, not the hardest job in the world. If you submerge yourself too far into it, uh, dark things happen and it's just not good to do that. So 
I started with my hobbies of getting back into radio for the fun side of things. That's why I created my radio stations. Shout out to Towpath Radio, Suite 419, and River Rat Country. And then as I got those together, I started really getting pulled back into the paranormal stuff. I've always been interested in it, and it's something that I, I wanted to do. I wanted to get out and explore a little bit. If you notice my videos, they're about a little bit more than paranormal stuff. If you notice, I call it paranormal exploring, which means half the video is the creepy stuff that we get on the recorders, but the other half is just exploring and the story behind the place that I go, like the Gibbs Bridge story. Maybe you never heard about that. Maybe you've just never had a chance to go out there. Well, now you have. You were able to do it through YouTube. Or the same thing with Wolfinger Cemetery out at Secor Park. You've probably heard of the Wolfinger Cemetery story, but you probably never heard the story of the person that was murdered out there. It's just fun to tell the stories. It's fun to get out. It's fun to record. It's fun to do these videos. I've always said I could care less if anybody watches these videos. I'm just having fun doing it. And uh, yeah, I've heard that people are actually having fun watching these. So that's why I'm doing this says, do you actually believe the audio you're picking up is from a ghost? That's a really good question. Because I try to listen back to the audio three different ways. If you watch the Gibbs Bridge video, you hear the audio that whispers wait. So that came across so clear that I wanted to double check it. I wanted to make sure that my other audio sources weren't picking up something totally different, right? If I heard it on my analog recorder, I listened back to it on the MP3 to make sure it wasn't a bird squawking. If I heard it on both, then I go back to the camera audio to see if I heard it there. If I only heard it on one and didn't hear it on the other items, then I'm like, um, maybe it is something. So I would consider it an EVP. Whether or not it's a ghost, I would like to believe that it is. That's the more fun belief. Um, I don't know. There's no way of actually proving that, to be honest with you. The conversation that I had on Reddit, because I post these videos on Reddit too, somebody asked, where was I in Secor Park during the Eliza video when the recorder was knocked over? If you didn't see that video, you got to watch it, because as I'm talking to whatever it is I'm talking to, the recorder got knocked over. This thing right here, it was sitting up steady on the picnic table. And when I asked a question somewhere along the lines of, are you pissed at the person who killed you or something like that? You have to watch the video. This just fell right over. It was pretty creepy. No wind, nothing like that. Just, just fell over. By the way, I have never experienced that type of physical contact that I can't explain. So the fact that maybe I would have chalked it up to something a little bit different, but it was too much of a coincidence when I asked the question and it happened right after as though it was answering. But you can draw your own conclusion from that video. Just uh, go to the page, subscribe, and you'll be able to find the Eliza video. Um, if Gibbs Bridge is all about urban legends, why would it be haunted? That's actually a really good question because there are, there are a bunch of different urban legends about Gibbs Bridge. I think there were three that I heard. A woman threw her baby into the uh, creek below killed the baby, baby haunts the bridge, a woman hung herself from the tree above the bridge. And the other one was that a farmer had tied off a line across the bridge. I believe it was to stop a motorcycle from going through or something like that. This farmer meant for it just to knock him off the motorcycle, but he put it too high and it decapitated him. There's no proof of any of that ever happening. But I was watching a video from a paranormal investigator. I believe it was Chris Tillman. He had a really good theory that was you know, maybe none of these events ever happened here. Maybe it's haunted because so many people go out there, do seances, and basically try to wake the dead that it could have created some sort of portal, if that's what you believe. Or it just could be an area where it's a hotbed now because people have gone out there so many times to try to interact with spirits. So if they want to interact, they know that they got to go to the bridge. Are you doing any indoor hunts? Your house? <laughs> uh, somebody at work asked me that question. Yes and no. So the house I'm not going to do. My house is over 100 years old. I mean, it was built in the 1800s. That's my safe space. I do not want to know if there's anything in there. I know there is something in there. I don't want to really bug it. Basically, if I'll be sitting there watching TV, always out the corner of my eye, I see a shadow walk by and it blocks the lights that are on my back patio from where I'm sitting. And I can't think of anything that would do that. And it's enough to get me to turn my head and really look. And I've always said, if you see something that gets you to turn your head like that more than once, chances are it's something. I'm not saying it's a ghost, but it could be a dog. It could be Bigfoot. It could be somebody. <laughs> it doesn't have to be paranormal. It could be anything. Are you doing any indoor hunts? Yes. So I've got a couple down 
that I want to do for sure. Um, I kind of want to do the South Main School in Bowling Green. I know a lot of people have gone out there, but I think that's a really good solo hunt that I could do. So, so you know, the whole idea of this channel is that I do most of this stuff alone. Occasionally, I'll take somebody with me, but I'm never going to do a big group of people. It's, it's never going to be an entire paranormal investigative team. Um, it might be me and maybe two other people, if that. And I'm going to be collaborating a lot with one of my really good friends, psychic medium Tammy Schuster. If you followed me in my KHQ days, she was on my morning show. One of the cool things about picking up these hobbies again, whether it's my internet stations or this, is I've been able to reconnect with so many people I never thought I'd talk to ever again. That's been one of the coolest parts. And I always knew I would stay in contact with Tammy, but uh, we've been more in contact since I started doing this, and it's just been great. But we're going to meet up at some point this summer. She's going to come out this way. We're going to do some exploring. We're going to see what she comes up with, with her abilities. And then I'm going to be heading up her way, and around Halloween... We're going to try to do a live stream at a haunted bed and breakfast up in northern Michigan. I've been there once before, but that's going to be the biggie. So yeah, all summer long, new videos are going to be coming out, both outdoor, indoor, wherever I can find to explore. I really want to do those. Where else are you going? Well, I kind of covered that. Um, so as far as, I think this means where am I going as far as haunted places? I'm actually going to answer it two different ways. So as far as the channel goes, the channel is going to be dedicated to paranormal exploring. I, it's going to be the bread and butter. It's the stuff that's a lot of fun. It's why I kind of resurrected, no pun intended, this channel. But I'm also going to be posting videos related to my internet stations. And for anybody that wants to create their own internet station, I'm going to do a uh, playlist of how-to videos. So don't be surprised if you see those coming up. As far as going and exploring... So there's a bunch of different places I want to go. A lot of them are outside, which is cool because the area that I live in, it's got a lot of history to it. Today I was trying to record over at Providence Metro Park. And if you're not familiar with Providence, it's a ghost town that I want to say was removed from the Lucas County Auditor's Map in the 1920s. The town was a hub for the Miami Erie Canal. So the canal boats would come through there. Lock 44, I believe, is what it is. And there used to be a hotel there. But that town had crime, prostitution. I'm sure there were murders. The big story is, though, a big part of why that town no longer exists is because the railroad came in, basically competed with the canal. Canal went out of business. But on top of that, there was a cholera outbreak that killed a good portion of the town. And then a couple fires leveled out the rest of the town. So I was over there trying to get some audio. There's a couple buildings over there, but there's just too many people around. Um, so that's one place I want to do the Fallen Timbers Battlefield. There is a place where I grew up and my friends and I used to actually play tag back in the woods in this area in Springfield Township, back where I grew up. Uh, my friend Heidi, if she's watching this, she knows. We used to have so much fun playing tag in the cornfield. Well, all that land now is public land. It's owned by the Metro Parks. So I want to go back there and explore because in that land, there was a burnt down house. And... For that exploration video, I'm going to take my mom with me because she has some stories of when she was a teenager and what went on to that burnt down house. So uh, stay tuned for that one. That, that should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I would like to do the Mansfield Reformatory, not because it hasn't been done 8 million times before. I just kind of want to experience that one. Um, you know, I know you can probably find about a thousand videos on YouTube of that. Coming up in the fall, I'm going on vacation out west. And one of our stops is going to be Jerome, Arizona, which is supposed to be one of the most haunted towns in America. The story is interesting, and I'll get into it more when I do the video, but apparently a lot of the concrete used to build the buildings has human remains in it. It's a crazy story. I was just looking it up last night, so... That's going to be on the list as well. So I'll probably revisit Eliza, go say hey to her, see if she says hey back. And we're going to have a lot of fun on the channel. So anyway, those are just a few questions that I, I wanted to answer. But yeah, those are good questions. What made you start doing these videos? That was one of my favorites, you know, just doing a hobby. And here's one thing going back to that question. I know it's kind of random. You're like, okay, you work this full-time job. I work third shift, by the way. You run three radio stations and you're doing these weird paranormal videos. Why? And like I already said, it's a hobby. It's to get my mind out of work. And it's because it's stuff I've always wanted to do. And I got to this point where maybe it's the last few years because they were really dark for a lot of people. I don't know anybody who didn't experience some sort of tragic loss in the last two years, whether it was related to COVID or uh, anything else, really. It's just been a bad couple years for a lot of us. That kind of woke me up a little bit and said, you know, 
life short. If there are things you want to do, figure out how to do them. Now, when I say that, I don't mean quit your job and give up the house. But if there are certain things you want to do, like for me, it's I want to run radio stations and have full control over them and run them my way. So how can I do that? Well, I can create internet stations. The other part is I want to get out and explore and, and find some creepy audio and video. How do I do that? I do that through these. You know, I want to entertain people. And I'm able to do that through all the stuff that I've been doing. So hopefully there's a little inspiration for you. I don't know. I just wanted to go back to that question because uh, I think there's a good story in that for everybody, that if there's something that you really want to do, make sure you do it before it's too late. Not saying that you're going to die, but saying that you never know what in your life could change. Whether it could be maybe uh, your family life changes, your work home balance changes. I can tell you right now, last summer I wouldn't have time to do this. I was working so much, I didn't know my ass from a hole in the ground. This summer, I've been blessed with moving, I've been blessed with going to a, a different shift that doesn't get pulled in as much for overtime and I've been able to have a little more fun. So, you know, take advantage of your time while you have it for sure. Anyway, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Hopefully it'll be from either the middle of the woods with my mother, or it could be from a ghost town across the river. Thanks for listening and make sure you hit subscribe because that helps me know that you want to see more of these videos and I'll make sure to keep pumping them out.